we're in the process of putting together the framework right now. This is one of the things that come together. Remember I told you about keeping a square? Uh, this is one of those times when you do want to be a square. What we've done effectively is gone in here on these edges. Not only do we cut it so that it is notched out and thus been able to go ahead and give it a uh, um, overlap joint and then put a lag bolt through it that comes all the way down. We put in some construction adhesive in there, which is basically a means of just filling in the void and giving it some adhesion, but frankly, you can't depend on glue to hold this together. That's not gonna happen. It's more just as a matter of fill in a putty, you might say, almost like a caulk that effectively holds up over time. It's got a little bit of elasticity to it. <clears throat> We're not using really big beams on this by any means. This is really, um, on a big house we use a six by six. In old lumber we can get away with using smaller dimensions than we might have used in new lumber because of the growth lines. When you look at a beam like this, you can actually count in the top of it, for example, 10 growth lines in less than about a half inch. So when I talk about 20 growth lines per inch or 16 growth lines per inch, this is what I'm talking about is how many um, years did it take to grow that. Structural grade is typically a matter of getting <coughs> at least six. The more you get, the better off you are. The stronger it is. And the less likely it is to warp, twist, or crack. The closer you get to the center, like on something like this where you can see this checking on the side, that means that you've got a, a, a cracking going on across it. We're going to show in a piece over here what happens if it gets water on it or if it gets wood bores. Things you have to look for in reusing old lumber is really critical, especially in framing elements, as the rot, the bug damage, um, the torquing or the twisting, and in some cases, when I say rot, not just wet rot, but dry rot. It continues on after the water's gone. You continue to get the um, decomposition due to bacteria that develops. So you can treat it with boric acid, which means basically boric acid mixed with water or some medium to carry it in and it kills it, stops it, the stops from growing. You don't have to use poisons necessarily. Over here, I just caught them getting ready to use this. And this is a four by six and it's gonna be a cross beam. It's gonna cross right here and then we'll go ahead and drop two by sixes across that way. Part of what makes this strong in the end is that we're also nailing down diagonally laid shiplap or one by 12 or some sort of subfloor, this solid lumber, three quarter inch. And then we're nailing into it so that it holds that down before we put the flooring in, which goes on top of that. The flooring runs this way, which means it gives it additional strength to these long pieces. And uh, effectively, that helps hold the floor up as well. It's not, if you collapse the floor, you actually have to collapse all that wood material and grain together. But obviously, something like this, your nail's not gonna hold very well. So as they're getting ready to cut this to notch it, to drop it in like that with a half notch, and I come along and look at it, and of course, what am I seeing? Well, first of all, it's a beautiful, beautiful tree. I mean, this thing has a little bit of a heart. It wasn't very mature, but you can see the heart, the red part, and then you see more yellow. Okay, this red part in this little tiny section right here, you're probably looking at 100 years of growth right up to that point. But what happened along the way was this thing got water on it. In the water, as it sat on it, you can see on this side how it tends to catch it. Well, out of these outer layers, as it catched, caught it, and that's not, this is heart, and this is sapwood. The sapwood, when it got wet, is separated from the heart. This is easier to rot. Heartwood, the reason heartwood, and you hear about it, it's talked about as it, if it's a species. It's a cut of a tree. It could be heartwood in loblolly, it could be heartwood in longleaf. But in longleaf pine, it's a beautiful red. And even in loblolly, but loblolly has to get pretty old. Old species loblolly. Now we never see loblolly old enough to have a heart anymore. It's like cutting down children. Literally, a lot, I mean, the sad part is when they deforested, they took everything. But now, the few loblollies, that are, I mean, longleaf that are left, there's like 100 acres in Alabama. They're trees that are 100 years old, 110 years old. You go down and cut a tree down like that, you're just wasting it. Because it hasn't developed the heart, it hasn't developed its 
its longevity. Uh, Cypress has to be 200 years old before it develops its rot resistance, its bug resistance, um, and long leaf before it gets strong. And this is the part that's the strongest and the most resistant in my porches. It's the most resistant to rot. It's the most resistant to the bugs. It'll ex it doesn't expand and get all distorted and warped and crazy. It'll expand and then contract in the same shape again, like a memory. And so, this in case is a good example of what happens when water gets on there and it rots the sapwood away, but the heart's pretty sound. You can see how it hardly rotted at all. And yet, the other side. This right here, I can pull away with my thumb. Wow. Now, the other suspicious thing about it is when you get water with longleaf pine, you get the component that you need to be able to what? Go ahead and make it food. It's so hard normally that most bugs won't eat it. Termites won't even bother with it on your house unless there's water nearby to soften it up enough for their mandibles to be able to grind it down and take it away for food. <clears throat> but here's an example. When you see a couple of these very, really little teeny um, indications, those little tiny pinholes, they look like somebody was man, ran a nail in there, but wait a minute, that's not gonna be a nail there, a nail there, a little nail there, a little. See that hole right there? These are little holes right there that you see, I'm gonna hand this around. That's your giveaway that there's wood boars. Now, wood boars are those cute little creatures that come along, um, manifested, I'm sure, for the purpose of helping dissolve all the stuff that needs to go back to nature again. And they go in there and they lay their egg right underneath the surface. And then when their egg hatches, it's got all this great food around. And as the larva is a little worm or a little grind or meal worm or whatever it might be, it continues to dig that hole right down on in there and eat, 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 eat. Really good, really good. Oh, wait, I'm, oh, I'm old enough. Hey, you know what? I got those hormones. I need to go find a mate. So it comes up to the top. We're just about the same time. Its mates are coming up. And they meet each other and have a party and go back down underneath and lay babies. And then as they go along, those little babies, you can see this is um, um, <clears throat> a mixture of adult and baby poop. After they eat, they leave behind a trail. Unlike termites, it's not sand. Okay, so when you dig this out and you look at that really close, it looks like it might be rot. Here, have some wood boar poop. Um, the, the problem with it is you only see those fine little pinholes on the surface. But when you look over here, what you actually see is it's almost like dust on the inside. That dust is the leftover of the wood. You can go ahead and take a look over here when I'm done and, and kind of at the piece I passed around. And it's almost like a dust that you can just brush out of there and that was wood at one time. Now it's not just water rot, it looks like it's almost just rotted when you first glance at it. But actually, this goes back. Now the thing is, is that when you first start out, it's only a few holes. As you start going up, the next time it's 30 holes. A little further up, the, oh look at this, go 35, 40 holes over here. Next thing you know, it's like 100 holes, all right? And so the consumption rate as they expand the family unit is enough to actually take this beam out as long as there's a water source. Now, if it dries out, their babies just lay dormant. <laughs> just waiting for some more water to go on. You know? It's like a mold. All of a sudden, wow, look at this. Hey, we're alive. Look at this. Wow. Uh -huh. Look at this. Food.